Hi there, Mar Haddad here again. So in this new uh, YouTube uh, video, I would like to show you how you can create VLANs on Cisco routers and uh, how uh, we can make the uh, interfaces as uh, trunk ports and uh, as access ports. So what are all those topics? That's something I'm going to show you in this slide. So here is my lab scenario. Let's say that you are a company, you have three switches. Now I'm not putting a router here because I'm going to do another video showing about the router when it comes to the VLAN. So I'm going to focus on how to create the VLANs, how to assign port to VLANs, how to do the trunk port. So when you have like three switches and you say that I want to put the PC1 on VLAN 10, PC2 on VLAN 20, and also PC3 on VLAN 10 and PC4 on VLAN 20. So that means what? That means that PC1 and PC3, they can't see each other, and PC2 and PC4 can see each other, but PC1 and PC2, they cannot see each other, even though they are physically connected to the same switch, but because they are on two different VLANs, they can't see each other. Same happens between PC3 and PC4. So that's the uh, beauty of a VLAN, because uh, with VLAN, you are creating virtual local air networks. So that means that, for example, you put some computers from the same department, wherever they are sitting, you put them on the same VLAN. That means they will share the same broadcast uh, domain. They are on the same network and those computers will not be able to see the other computers which are on another VLAN or another department. So that's the beauty of the VLAN. So what we are going to do in this lab, I'm going to make the ports between the switches. They should be trunk port. Trunk port is to allow the VLANs to pass. So we said this is VLAN 10, this is VLAN 20. So if PC1 wants to speak to PC4 or PC3, then they should send their uh, uh, traffic to the switch. The switch will tag it and then it has to go uh, the VLAN to PC3. Same happened between PC2 and PC4, which are on different VLAN. Also, this comes to the switch and will be tagged and this has to be passed through all the way to the PC4. So that's uh, also the trunk port that allow all the VLANs. Of course, you can make it uh, to allow some of the VLANs, but by default, it will allow all the VLANs, all the tagged VLAN to pass through the trunk port. So something to remember, when you think of the trunk port, you have to think that those are the interfaces which are connected to other switches. Also, later we'll see that you are with the, with the router, that's also trunk port. So that means the gigabit interface 0 over 0 on switch 1, on switch 2 and you get 0 over zero, uh, 0 over 1 on switch 2 and switch 3 those ports should be trunk port to allow the VLAN to pass through those links now what we need to do is to make the gigabit 0 over 2 on the PC to be on uh, a VLAN and to make it an access port why access and not trunk because it's connected to an end device so that means that once the PC send the traffic then it comes to here then this interface will tag it with the right VLAN and then we let it go to the trunk. Same, when it comes back, it comes to the switch, the switch will untag it because it's an access port. So we'll remove the tag, uh, the VLAN tag from it because the computer does not understand what the VLAN is. So the switch will untag it and we'll send it normally as a normal frame. Because if we look on the frame header, once you add the VLAN, then you will see a uh, part of the frame, it's having a uh, tag uh, inside of it. So this is what is the uh, VLAN tag, we call it. All right, so that's uh, all what we need to do in this lab. So at the end, what I'm going to do, once we finish creating the VLANs, making the trunk port, making the access port, I'm going to put this PC and uh, this uh, on the VLAN 10, this PC on VLAN 20, this is on VLAN 10, this is on VLAN 20, then we try to ping from PC1 to PC3 to see if it's able to reach it and from PC2 to PC4. So this is what we are going to do. Let's go now to the lab and start doing it. So let's start uh, the lab directly. I have put the picture here so you can see what I'm doing. So first, uh, if we look again, we are going to go to switch one. We make gigabit zero over zero as a trunk port. And then we start working on gigabit on the switch two, gigabit zero over zero switch two, gigabit zero over one switch two also trunk, and then gigabit zero over one of the switch three trunk port. So all those interfaces are connected to each other on the switches. So those should be trunk ports. So let's do that. Let's go first to switch one. And over here we go to configure terminal interface gigabit zero over zero. And how to do with the trunk? First, if you just say, um, for example, like uh, if you just say switch port mode trunk, 
then look, you will get an error. They will say that the trunk encapsul encapsulation is set to auto. Some switches, they do this uh, problem that if you have the auto uh, on the encapsulation, then uh, this doesn't work right away. So you have to change the encapsulation and you have to tell it that I want this encapsulation, encapsulation to be one q So one q is the encapsulation of the trunk. So it's like the language which allow the switches to communicate to each other on the trunk. So how to do that? We have to say switchboard, trunk, encapsulation. And you can see we have the dot uh, one q that is uh, uh, open standard used by all uh, Cisco switches and other brands as well. You have ISL, this is uh, for Cisco, but this is a non-continuous protocol, so it's not known anymore used, but on the shuttle, it's still there. And there is the negotiate, which is by default, it is there. So we have to hard code it and we say dot one q. And now if I say switch port uh, mode trunk, so on this interface, I want this to be trunk, then this is done. Now, if I say, for example, show interface, switch port then you can see the interface you get with zero over one it is a uh, trunk you can also say for example show interface gigabit zero over zero trunk so you just decide that i want to see only this interface and you can see it is trunk so from this side is finished now we go to switch two we have to do the two interfaces gigabit zero over zero and zero over one configure terminal let's do something like this interface range you get it zero over zero and one. So in this case, I just uh, do one comment for two interfaces. And now we have to say switch port encapsulation, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q, and switch port mode trunk. Let's see now what we have. So if I say show uh, show uh, uh, interfaces trunk, for example. Then I can see that I have gigabit 0 over 0 and 0 over 1, both the R trunk. Very good. And at the end, if we go back to the picture, we have to make 0 over 1 on switch 3. So configure terminal, interface, gigabit 0 over 1, switch port, the trunk, encapsulation dot one q switch port, mod, trunk. So very good. So all those three interfaces, they have been configured as trunk. Now what I need to do, uh, before I start working on the access uh, uh, interfaces to make the host interfaces as access, I want to create the VLAN. So let's say that we have two VLANs, one for sales and one for management. We make VLAN 10 as for sales and VLAN 20 as management. And those VLAN will be assigned to those computers later. So we have to do this work on each switch. Now someone can say, well, we have three, three switches now. We can create VLANs right on three switches. That's not a problem. But what if we have for example, 50 switches in our company and we have to create 50 VLANs. So do we have to create this on each of the switch? Then the answer is no, you don't have to. You can use the protocol, which is called VTP. Then you create the VLANs on one VTP server, which is one of the switches. And then you have the trunk port and then all the other switches will become like VTP clients. And then they will receive all the VLANs that you created on one of the switch. But that's something I'm going to do a video again on it uh, later on uh, the YouTube channels to show you how this happens. Uh, but for now, let's just create the VLANs on the three switches. So how to create the VLANs? Very easy. Configure terminal, VLAN 10, and we give it name. Let's give it the name of sales. So this is for VLAN 10 and then VLAN 20 name. And uh, we make uh, management, for example. So now if we say show VLAN, we can see that we have VLAN 10 says it is active and VLAN 20 management it is active, but they don't have any interfaces on them. So you can see all the interfaces of this switch that are still on the VLAN one, um, which is uh, the uh, default uh, VLAN. So all those interfaces are still there. Later, we have to move the interfaces connected to the computers. We have to put them on the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Now switch to, do we really need to create the VLANs? Let's think of it. Do we have any computer connected to switch to? No. But yeah, even if you don't create the VLANs, the VLAN will pass because there is a trunk between the switch one and switch three. So there is switch two, but these are those interfaces are trunk, so the VLAN will pass. So why do we have to create them on switch three? Let's go to switch three. And also we say 
VLAN 10 name series, VLAN 20 name management. And do show VLAN. Here we go. So we have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 that have been created. Very good. So this is done. So we have the trunk. We have created the VLANs. Now we have to say on switch one that you get a zero over two is an access port on VLAN 10. And you get a zero over three is an access port on VLAN 20. So then if the computer send anything to the switch, then it will tag it on VLAN 10. And if the switch is receiving some packet for to VLAN 10, then it will, he knows that he has to send it to PC1, which is on VLAN 10. You get the idea? So let's do that. Let's go to the switch one. And from the switch one, I have to go to the configure terminal. And now I have to get to, to go to the interface, you get a zero over two. Switch port mode access. So I'm saying that this interface is access and, and it is on VLAN 10. Switch port access, VLAN 10. So this is for gigabit 0 over 2. Now I will do for the interface gigabit 0 of 3, which is connected to PC2. And I have to say switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. So if we make now show VLAN, we should see that on the VLAN 10, we have indeed gigabit 0 over 2, which was over here, but now it is inside VLAN 10. And we have gigabit 0 over 3, it is inside VLAN 20, which is the management VLAN. Very good. So let's go now to the switch 3, and let's look to the picture again. Switch T also, 3, gigabit 0 over 2 on VLAN 10, gigabit 0 over 3 on VLAN 20. So let's do that. We go again to the switch. This is switch three. Interface, you get a zero over two. And now we have to say switch port um, uh, mode access and switch port access VLAN 10. Now we go to the interface. Interface, you get a zero over three. Switch port mode access, so this is an access port, and now switch port access VLAN 20. Now let's check the VLANs, show VLAN. So we see that the gigabit 0 over 2 is inside VLAN 10, the says, and gigabit 0 over 3 is inside VLAN 20, the management interface. Very good, so up to now, if we make a small review, we have made the trunk between those switches, we have created the VLANs on switch 1 and switch 3. We have said that PC1 is on VLAN 10, same PC3, and PC2 is on VLAN 20, same PC4. So now I need to put IPs on PC1 and PC3, same range. IPs on PC2 and PC4, same range. And I'm going to make the ping. So I'm going to use on PC3, on PC1, 10.10.10, uh, .10 because we said it is VLAN 10, so 10.10.10. .10 and here 10.20.20, .20 because that's VLAN 20. So then we put on PC1 10.10.10.1 .10 and on PC3 10.10.10.2. Let's do that. Actually, maybe I have already put the IPs. Let's open the GNS3. So this is PC1. This is PC2. I'll open everything as computers, PC3 and PC4. Okay. So PC1. Let's uh, say show IP. Yes, indeed, I put the IP addresses. You see 10.10.10.1. So how to put the IP is very easy. Just make IP, and if you say question mark, it will show you here. Put IP 10.10.10.1 slash 24. That's how you have to write it. All right. So this is having, having the 10.10.10.1. PC3 has show IP 10.10.10.2. Very good. So let's ping from one to another. Then from PC1, I say ping 10.10.10.2. Here we go. It's working. Perfect. Let's go to PC2 now. Do we have IP? Show IP. Indeed, 10.20.20.1. PC4. Show IP. 10.20.20.2. Very good. Same range of IPs. Let's ping from PC2 to PC4. 10.20.20.2. Here we go. Excellent. Perfectly working. Now, what I want to do is just to show you a very nice trick. So 
you see that PC1 and PC2 are physically connected to the same switch. So even though they are connected on to the same switch, but they are on different VLANs, then they will not see each other even on layer 2. All right, and to show you that, look, if we go to PC1, and over here I say show ARP. So just show me the ARP table. Look, he will only see the ARP table on layer 2. We see the computer, which is PC2. He doesn't see PC3. Even though that PC3 is connected physically to him, he doesn't see it. Same if I go to PC2 and I say show ARP. Same, you can see he doesn't see the uh, PC1, uh, but he see PC4, 10.20.20.2, that's PC4. So even though on the, the R table, also the layer 2, they don't see each other. So that's how you can divide the computers using, using the uh, VLAN. So that's uh, all what I wanted to show in this lab. So that is uh, everything that I wanted to explain in this lab. I just showed you how you can uh, create uh, the VLANs uh, on the, the true Cisco switches, how you can make the ports as trunk and as access. And we have seen at the end, it's working perfectly. If you like my way of teaching, please do not forget to make a like on this video, to subscribe to my channel and to click on the bell so you are notified by my new videos when they come to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for the time you spent watching this uh, video and see you next time.